it is finally time to start the coding stuff again. And today's video is especially fun because I actually think this strategy is super cool. The two pointer technique. Dude, the name is so cool too. Two pointer? Like, it's not even just one pointer, it's two. Hello everybody, I'm Karar and today I just wanted to talk about the two pointer technique because one of you guys left it in the comments and I actually think that it's a super cool technique. So, let us talk about it. Now, the two pointer technique is not an algorithm in any stretch of the imagination. It's more of a technique, right? But it's not advanced at all. Super simple stuff. But the reason why it's so cool is because it has tons of applications and so basically it makes things way more elegant. It's also super cool that you can simplify like hard problems using a really simple technique. So essentially what two pointer is, is literally just using two pointers, right? Like two pointer technique is pretty darn vague, but let us go through a bunch of examples, okay? Cause that's the cool part. So the example that you've all probably heard of is where you have an array, right? And you want to reverse it. So now if you're a troll, what you would do is you would make a new array and you would basically do this, 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 and you would move this five over here, hooray. Move this four over there, three, two, one. And how dare you, okay? This is the suckiest way to do it. You literally had to create a whole new array Bro, what are you doing, man? Now, I know in Yusuko, memory is not that big a deal, but in general, if you're doing a programming interview or anything like that, you need to actually have the most efficient solution, which includes memory space. So this ain't gonna work, okay? This is lame. We want to do it in the array itself, okay? So basically what you do is you literally have two pointers, one pointing here, one pointing there, and then you swap the two things that are at the two pointers. So this becomes a five, and then this becomes a one. And then you move your two pointers, one right here, and then the other one moves over here, and then you swap them. And then once the two pointers reach the middle, you don't need to swap anymore, you are done. And we did not have to create a single other array, it was all done right in place just because we used two pointers. Literally just by, instead of having one pointer that went through the array and copied it over, we just added a single more pointer and we were able to save, like, n space. We were able to save a whole array worth of space just with one variable. So now most of you guys are interested in use ago, so memory, you might not care about memory. But two pointer can also make things way faster. So let's say we had an array that's like this, right? And we wanted to find the second biggest number in this array. Now a lot of you guys would be tempted just to sort it and take the second value, right? That's pretty bad, right? That's n log n time, that sucks. Whenever you had to sort something, you're doing n log n time, which is always worse than just going through the array once. Then the next strategy you might think of is just go through it once, find the biggest number, right? Then go through it a second time and ignore the number that you're pointing to before. So then you find that your answer is 7. Very cool stuff. But why have if you could do it only going through it once? Basically, what you could do is you could keep track of the top two numbers. So, right here, on the first time, 3 is our biggest number. Let's call the biggest number A. And then now we move on to 5. So now clearly 5 is the biggest number. So now we set this to A, right? And then 3, because it's no longer the biggest number, gets booted over to B, the second biggest number. Then we go to 7. And we say 7 is bigger than both our A and our B. So that means that it must be the biggest number we've seen so far, and that also means that our current A is the second biggest number we've seen so far. So this guy becomes a B because he's the second biggest so far. 7 becomes an A. And then we move on to 6. And we see 6 is not bigger than our A, so it's not our biggest number we've seen so far. But it's bigger than the second biggest number we thought we saw so far. So that means it is now our official second biggest number. It's not bigger than our first biggest number, but it's bigger than our second biggest number. So now 6 becomes B. And then finally we go to 8, and we're like, Whoa, 8 is bigger than our A, this is crazy stuff. So... 8 becomes our new A, 7 gets booted out to B, and now 6 is no longer anything. And then, once we're done, we just look at the value of our second pointer, and hooray, we get 7. Very cool stuff. We only had to go through the array once, okay? So that basically means we did it twice as fast. That's pretty insane. But once again, on used to go, no one cares if you can do it twice as fast. The only thing that matters is whether it's n, n log n, or n squared. So, I will prove to you that this is even more useful, okay? What happens if we wanted to find a pair of elements with some closest to x? Now, the brute force solution says, just iterate through all pairs, that is such a good idea. The brute force solution is always the best solution, okay? Not gonna lie, why even think about it? But that is O of n squared, that is lame. We can't do O of n squared, that is too lame, okay? n squared should be illegal, because then we had to look at this guy, then we had to look at all these guys, then we have to look at this guy, and then we had to look at all these guys, and then we had to look at this, yeah, it sucks. We're not doing that. Let's say we're looking for the pair that's closest to a sum of 15. But if we look at our array, it seems like we can't do better than O of n squared, right? Because if we look at 3, we can't immediately just like randomly pick our number in the array and somehow it magically is right. So we'll at least have to look through all the rest of them in order to see which one is 
the closest to 15. So, two-pointer also works really well when you sort the array as well. So this is also a really good example of why sorting is useful and why you should always try sorting and see if you can notice any patterns. So if we sort our array, we get three, four, five, six, eight. Then if we look at three and we want to know which number gets it as close to 15 as possible, we basically want to find the number that's as close to 12, right? Because three plus 12 is exactly equal to 15. And basically, if it's sorted, we can immediately just like see where would 12 be located. 12 would be somewhere here. So that means this is the closest. So I basically took n log n time to sort the array, and then for each number that we look at, it takes log n time to find the pair that would get, bring it closest to 15. Because we're binary searching for 12, and then we find the closest one to that location. However, two-pointer makes it even better, dude. We could do even better with two-pointer. So let's say that the array is already sorted, and we want to find the thing that is closest to, let's say, well, what's a good number? What about... 13. So basically, we start our two pointers at the end of the array, right? And the reason why my strategy is going to work is because we know that if we move this pointer to the right, our sum is going to increase, right? But if we move this pointer to the left, our sum is going to decrease. So we know that 8 plus 3 is 11, right? So clearly, our sum is too small. So in order to increase our sum, what do we got to do? That's right, we have to move our left pointer to the right. So no reason to move our right pointer less because then our sum is just going to get smaller and farther away from 13. Okay, so our previous one was 11, now we're at 12, so clearly this pair is better, so that's pretty good. So we'll keep track of our best pair, right? So 1, comma, this index 1, and this index 4. Hooray! So now, it's still smaller than 13, so we once again have to bring this guy up. And now we're exactly at 13. So now we know that 2, 4 is our answer. So that was not a great example because we only had to move one of the pointers. But what happened? It was more complicated. Okay, so let's say we have this array and we want to find the thing closest to 23. So we start over here, we start over here, and we're at 21 right now. So that's too small, so we had to move this guy up. So right now 22 is our best bet. So right now our best is 1, 6. However, 22 is still less than 23, so we gotta move this guy up. What? No, we got to 25! That's even worse than 22! This sucks! Well, we could make our sum smaller by moving to the left. So, we move this guy over to the left, and now we're at 14 plus 5, we're at 19, that still sucks, okay? We're not closer to 23 than, like, 22 was. So then, we're at 19, so we gotta increase our sum, so we move this guy up. And hurry, we got 22 again! So we know that 3 comma 5 also works, or it's equally as close. And then 22 is still too small, so we gotta move it over another time. Now we're at 27 though, so that sucks, so this doesn't work. And hooray, we found both the answers that work, not just one, we found both. And that took n time, right? We only had to go through each number in the array once. We never looked at any number twice. Okay, so why don't we just code this up to show you guys how it works. We're gonna do things in Python because Python's actually pretty fun and really easy to understand. Also, if you guys want me to make a Python in 10 minutes video, I could probably do it in 5 minutes. Python is super easy for you to go, it's just really slow, but it's still really cool. So if you guys want me to make that kind of video, just let me know down in the comments. Okay, so let us def a function, uh, some pair, and we will take in an array, and we will take in a x. So basically what we want to do is we want a pointer at the beginning of the array, so p1 equals 0, and then we also want a pointer at the end of the array, so len r minus 1. And then we want to keep track of our best pairs, right? And that's just going to start off as your first and last thing. That's our best so far. And then we also want to keep track of our best sum, which is just the current sum. So the one that P1 points to plus the one that P2 points to, very cool stuff. Okay, now how long do we want to repeat the loop? So basically, if we look at our diagram, right, we start off here. And we already did the calculation for the first and last one. So the first thing we'll do in our for loop is to move one of the pointers, right? And eventually, we want to get to here. Right? So in the first iteration of our for loop, we'll move the pointer, and then check this guy, move the pointer, move the pointer, move the pointer. So four times we had to move the pointer. So we had to move the left pointer four times, and then we had to move the right pointer one time. So basically, our for loop has to happen five times, and our array length is set. So essentially, we just have to run the for loop n minus two times. So we just do four i in range n minus two, or len array minus two. Then we also have to keep track of our current sum. So our current sum is just going to equal best sum right now. Then if our sum is less than what we want it to be, so if s is less than x, then we have to increase our left pointer, right? Because if we move a pointer upwards, it increases our sum, and if we move a pointer downwards, it decreases our sum. So p1 plus equals 1. Otherwise, we gotta move our p2 down. Now we gotta do all the logic with whether or not this is the best sum yet. So basically, we gotta check if our current sum to x is smaller than our best sum to x. So we basically do this car is equal to abs s minus x. Wait, honestly, we could literally just store our best difference. That's probably a better idea. And then minus x and then absolute value of that. So if our diff car is smaller than our best diff, then we want to replace our best pairs with this new pair that we found. So best pairs equals 
P1, column P2. And then our best div is going to be our div part. Oh, wait, we had to recompute S first. Whoops. Okay, so, so now S is just going to be equal to R P1 plus R P2. Bro, I'm trolling myself. Okay, so this has to be the sum, and then we, okay, okay. All right, now that's a lot better. Now we had to check if our diff car is equal to the best diff. So if diff car is equal, equal to best diff, then we basically want to add to our best pair. So we basically do best pairs, dot append, p1, comma, p2. Okay, and if it's not better, then we don't do anything with it. We just keep going. And then at the very end, let us print our best pairs and our thing. Actually, we can just return it. And then we want to call it our thing. So sum pair 13, 14, 20, and our sum is going to be, what do we want it to be? 23. And then we got to print out the answer so we don't just see a blank screen. Okay, 1, 6, 3, 5, just as we said. Very cool stuff. Why don't we try 22 or something? It gives you the same answer because both of our things that we wanted for 23 were equal to 22. Okay, what about 21? 0, 6, and 3, 4 because they're both exactly equal to 21. Very good stuff. We did it. Basically, the point of the two-pointer technique is that you could do a really simple strategy in order to decrease the time and memory of your program. And it works really well with sorting, right? Because you have this invariant that if you move a pointer left, it's going to decrease, and if you move a pointer right, it's going to increase. So if you want to apply this to Usico, what I would recommend is just go through all the examples you can find of two-pointer technique. Because basically, if you look at all these examples, you can figure out how to apply it to new problems, and the actual algorithm itself is not that important. The main thing you have to take away is the strategy that people use in order to apply two-pointer technique to problems. So before we go, let's just do a really quick example of a more advanced thing you could do with it. Like let's say you have an array and you have like one, three, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And you wanted to find a subarray of this array that is closest in sum to let's say like 13. So basically what we do is instead of starting at two ends of it, we start it right here. Both of them are right here. So right now our subarray does not include anything, it's just zero elements, so a sum is zero. So now we want to increase the sum. So how do we do that? We expand the array by moving our right pointer to the right. Now the sum is one, it's still too small, let's move it to the right. All right, now we're at five plus three plus one is nine, still too small. Let's just keep track of our best one. So zero comma two gives us nine. All right, now we go over here and now we get 16. Well, 16 is better than nine because 16 is three away from 13. So that changes it. So zero three gives us 16. Okay, but now our sum is too big. So how do we decrease the sum? We have to move this one over to the right. All right, now we have 15, that's still too big, but it's better. So this becomes 15 and this becomes 1, 3. So now we had to move it again. Now it becomes 12, which is even closer. So now our answer is 12, and now it's too small, we move it up. And we'll blame it, we got exactly 13. So now we got 2, 4 is 13, and we know that we can't basically do better, so this is the best thing we got. Why don't we just edit the code? It's literally the same thing. So they both started at 0, our sum starts at 0, and if our sum is too small, we want to increase our P2 instead of increasing our P1, and and instead of subtracting from our P2 if it's too small, we want to add to our P1. However, our sum is not just the first and last thing, it's the sum of everything in between. So we'll just keep track of the sum as we increase our point. Oh, huh, I guess it should be P2 exclusive, right? So if P2 becomes 1, then we have to add in the 0 thing. So sum plus equals array P2 minus 1. And then if we increase our P1, we're getting rid of the thing left of the P1. So we got to do S minus equal array P1 minus 1. Okay, this is still valid. Everything's still valid, and we want to sum to 13. Oh, what we should change this to while p2 is less than x. Okay. And nice, we got it. Okay, very cool stuff. All right, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you guys want me to do more of these Yusuko Crash Bros, just let me know down in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and see you guys next time.